Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm delighted to be here today, and I want to thank my good friend Sergio for inviting me to be here. I bring you some scary news and lots of hope. Now, the scary news is that we've had a party for too long. We are all drunk on arrogance, and a lot of us have money, so that aids and abets the arrogance, and we don't care. We think we are at the apex of the species pyramid. Every other species, and mind you, there are 8 million of species documented on the planet, and we think every other species exists to serve our interests. If that is not arrogant, nothing is. Let me just start by, you know, uh, we are at a gathering called Planeteers World Gathering. So we get very happy about Amazon sending two people paying $200,000 each to space. And then, you know, then there is Virgin Atlantic, and then there's all kinds of tourists going to space. Whereas the fact is, the most beautiful spaceship in the cosmos is planet Earth. We're actually in a spaceship. We just don't know it, or those of us that know it do not acknowledge it well enough. We're actually in an object that travels through space nonstop. That's reality. So when Sergio was asking me, what do we call your talk, I said, let's call it reality check. Where we are and why we are and what can we do about it? And that's why I love so much what Planeteers does, and we are so proud to have them as a member of the Global Alliance for a Sustainable Planet. We're an organization that's based out of New York, and uh, we catalyze system-scale transformation across the planet. More about that possibly tomorrow when I'm speaking about partnerships. But let me stay focused on what the reality is. In the last 100 years, and I'm not talking 1,000, 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, or the Paleolithic scale. I'm just talking about the last 100 years. We have gone from 350 parts per million of carbon concentration in the atmosphere to 422 now, which is where we were 3 million years ago. That's the damage. You know, many a times I ask my audience, do you know how much carbon is in the atmosphere? Because everybody talks about carbon being such a bad thing. Carbon is actually life. We are all carbon. Everything that you see here is made of carbon. And so 422 parts per million is actually 0.000422%. That's how little carbon is there in the atmosphere. And it is so sensitive that even 422 parts per million can actually end the planet as we know it. So in the last 100 years, what we have done is we found fertilizers. What a wonderful discovery. Call it NPK, right? Nitrates, phosphates, and phosphorus. It has literally destroyed the planet. The country where I come from, India, ideally, for good agriculture, you need about 2.5 to 3% soil organic carbon. And you know what? In the last 60, 70 years, that India has been doing the green revolution. It's actually, I call it the brown revolution. The soil organic carbon has dropped to below 0.5%, making it completely unsustainable. There are parts in the country, like Punjab, which is called the breadbasket of India. You have to dig 200 meters to find water. You'll actually, in other countries, you'll find oil in that depth. And then, of course, we found plastic. The whole planet is choking in plastic. We produce and deposit about 9 million tons into the oceans every year. And we recycle only anywhere between 8 to 9 percent of the roughly 10 billion tons of plastic we have produced since plastic started. And then we talk about it in glowing terms. You know, we humans, we are so fantastic. We found a great product. What a packaging material. It's plastic. 
and is choking everything we know. Our oceans, our rivers, our water bodies, and all the creatures, even penguins in the most remotest parts of the world are actually found with plastic particles in their stomach. That's all on us. We can't escape responsibility. My generation can escape responsibility because, you know, I'm 60-something, so it's all good, you know, I'll be gone. But if we have a conscience, we need to take responsibility for what we have done to the planet. Talking about water, the Greenland ice sheet alone, just the Greenland ice sheet, I'm not talking the Arctic and the Antarctic, if it melts, and it is melting 30 times faster than it was melting in the 90s. This is science. I'm not making up things here. Please fact check everything I'm telling you. 30 times faster. And the Greenland ice sheet alone will add 22 feet of water to the ocean around the world. And Portugal has such a beautiful coastline. So does my country, back in India, 7,200 kilometers. And pretty much everywhere you look around the world, the productive landscape is along the coastline. The economic activities are along the coastline. Our history, our rich history of the world, over thousands of years, has been about people sailing to new shores, finding new people, new countries, new cultures. Everything is at risk. And I, I used to be the UN's head of the Environment Management Group uh, until last year when I moved over to this organization. And at that time, we did a study of zoonotic diseases, which is when pathogens jump from animals to humans because there was COVID-19. And what did we find? In the last 30 years, 75% of the new diseases are all zoonotic diseases. COVID, SARS, MERS, AIDS, you just pick up every disease that had the potential to destroy humanity came from a pathogen that jumped from an animal to human. And now it just came out three days ago. Scientists now find specific evidence that what happens in the Arctic is not going to stay in the Arctic. They're already finding evidence that as the glaciers melt, bacteria that has been hidden for tens of thousands of years in permafrost is actually now coming out into the open. In 2015, in Siberia, there was suddenly out of nowhere, they had a case where a child died of anthrax. They said, anthrax in Siberia? And they found that when the permafrost melted, there was a reindeer carcass that came into the open. And that was infected with anthrax millions of years ago. And then that infected the child, and tens of other people who all ended up in the hospital and some died. And imagine when that happens on a global scale, because when the glaciers melt, the bacteria with the waters will travel around the world. If we are worried about COVID-19, we need to be very worried about what's happening to the Arctic and the Antarctic ice sheets. Talking about fire, the United States, where I am, every year, pretty much they lose 10 million acres to wildfires. 10 million acres, that's not some small patch of land. And this year, by July, they had already crossed 5 million. So my guess is that by the end of the year, it will be way more than 10 million acres. At that rate, you will have no vegetation left. So the story is simple. We need to wake up. We need to act. The party needs to stop. And often people say, oh, you know, you want us to eat less, you want us to wear less, you want us to become like saints, do nothing, not that. Sustainability is not about what not to do. For too long, we have talked about what not to do. Actually, sustainability is about what to do. What is the right thing to do? I'll share with you an example uh, from, um, uh, from India. Uh, and, and this is something massive, so, so I will share that with you. Uh, in the state of Andhra Pradesh, which is a state of 55 million people, they have about 6 million farmers. So five years ago, we started working with them uh, on, an, on an idea that was crazy at that time, that let's turn all the farmers to natural farming. No chemical fertilizers, no pesticides. 
So they picked up some ideas from a famous Japanese agronomist called Masanobu Fukuoka, who developed the concept of regenerative agriculture in the 40s, and took some of the practices that the Indians did before the fertilizers became popularly available. And now, five years later, they have a million farmers who have converted to natural farming. It costs them 80% less to produce food, and they produce about 30 to 200% better yields. Better food, better nutrition, and better everything. And it costs less. So this is not about giving up what we do. This is about doing things the right way. And the possibilities are endless, as you will hear from many speakers throughout the three days, that sustainability is an idea whose time has come. But as Sergio rightly pointed out, the challenge is immense, but so are the opportunities. And if we put our heads together and work together, the world is ours to change. And, and we can be here forever, not necessarily us in the room, but our species. We can be kind to the other species, we can protect them, and we can still enjoy our presence on space of Earth. And when we finally leave, we'll be a very happy lot that we actually rose up to the challenge, we made things possible, and our children will talk about us for centuries, that here was a generation that really made the change that was required possible. Thank you.